Hey, good morning, options traders. Well, I posted a video recently about calendar spread expirations and said that I would be posting another one here recently. And it's more about the traps that traders step into with their calendar spreads because they're, it's really just a misperception with risk and reward, but it's a very easy one to step into. So I wanted to do a little more of a detailed analysis to show you the difference between the cost of the calendar spread versus the return on the investment and why this relationship is happening. So for a quick review, remember what a calendar spread is, also called a time spread. You're going to buy a longer dated call at one strike and you will sell a shorter dated call at the same strike. Now, yes, because calls are puts, puts are calls, you could certainly use puts as well. But both options have to be the same type, either both calls or both puts. Now, for calendar spreads, they are usually the at-the-money strike, but they don't have to be. We can do what's called a bull calendar spread or a bear. But normally, if you're just doing a regular calendar spread, it's going to be with the at-the-money strike. So as an example, you might buy the April $100 call and sell the January $100 call. Different expirations, same strike. And because you're buying the longer dated option, this is actually what's called a long calendar spread. It's going to be a debit. And your risk graph will look something like this. So notice that the point right here lines up at exactly the strike. And then we get kind of this upside down V shape. But the real risk is if the stock happens to go too far up or too far down. And so that's going to be important when we look at the Excel spreadsheet and what's happening with the pricing. It's always about whether things are getting riskier or less risky. And unfortunately, traders always misinterpret this and end up placing bad trades. So let's find out a little bit more about the pricing of calendar spreads and why they become riskier as you start selling longer dated options against them. Okay, so now we're into the Excel spreadsheet and it's gonna take me just a little bit of time to explain these various columns and rows, but bear with me, it will make a lot of sense when we get to the end. So the first column is just showing various months. All right, so we've got a one month option, two month option, all the way down to a 25 month option. I'm assuming the one month option is priced at a dollar. And if that's true, then the other options would follow the square root pricing rule that we've talked about before. So in other words, if the two month option has twice as much time on it, it's not going to be worth twice as much. We need to take the square root of two. So if you put that into a calculator, square root of two is 1.41. That means its price will be 1.41 times bigger than this, not twice as big. So if the one month option is a dollar, the two month option is worth a buck 41. Notice that the four month option having four times as much time, take the square root of four, that comes up to two, so its price will be two times that of this first one, and all the way down the line. So again, this is how a pricing model would work, assuming that we don't have interest and dividends. So that's where those prices are coming from. Now in this model, we are assuming that you are always buying the 25 month option down here for five. And then we're just going to take a look at what would happen if you sold various months against it, selling the one month, the two month, and all the way down. And that's what we're looking at here in all of these rows. So let's start with the first row. If you buy the 25 month option and you short the one month option, that's a $4 debit. Why? You paid five, you sold for one, that's a debit of four. Now, when we get to expiration, we are assuming that the stock price is right at the strike. So that means your long is going to decay by one month. So if we look at our prices, assuming that these relationships hold, it's going to fall from five to 490. That's where that number is coming from. The long at expiration would be worth 490. The short option, again, is an at the money option. So it's going to be worthless. And that's why we're getting zeros all the way down through here. The next column shows the profit. So if you paid four and you could close it for 490, that would be a 90 cent profit. So 90 cents divided by four would be a 22% return on your money. All right, so that's all we're doing with various expiration months. 
So let's take a look at the two month. What we're assuming here is you're buying the five and selling the two month. So this column right here is showing us the additional credit you're going to get. Notice you got a dollar for selling the one month and a dollar 41 for selling the two. So you got an extra a little over 41 cents. Now notice what's happening here because of this square root pricing relationship. Look what happens to the additional credit. This is going to be important in a little bit. If you are selling longer and longer dated options, yes, you're getting more money, but the additional money that you're getting is falling. So because you are getting more money, yes, your net debit is going to fall. It will always fall. And this is the big mistake that traders make. They think, hey, it's less risky because I'm spending less. You know, let me buy the 25 month option and sell the 15 month against it or sell the 20 month. Look how cheap I can make it. I can make it 53 cents. There's no risk. And look how big the potential reward is. But you can also see something else that's happening. The long position starts becoming exposed to more and more decay, right? The longer dated options are worth more per unit of time. They're actually the cheapest options on the board if we divide out the number of days. But look what happens as you start holding them for longer and longer. They start getting exposed to bigger and bigger time decay. So take a look at these rows. See how your time decay, the additional decay of that long position is starting to grow. In other words, if you hold it for one month, buy the 25 and sell it when it's a 24 month option, you're going to lose a tiny bit over 10 cents. But if you hold it for two months, you lose a tiny bit more. Hold it down here for four months, you're going to lose even more. So every time that you hold this position for an extra month, the cost is getting bigger, that's this column, and the rewards are getting smaller. So yes, notice that in total your profit will grow, but only to a certain point. Do you see how we hit 206 and we hit 207 here, and then we go to 207 and then your profit starts to fall. So what's happening here? Well, if we buy the 25 month and we sell the 13 month, we get about a little over 14 cents of an additional credit, but that is exactly the amount of the additional decay. So there's really no benefit, and that's why the profit stays the same. However, if we look at this in terms of ROI, it always grows. So each row, it starts to grow. So notice what's happening here with your profit. That is this orange line right here. So you're going to start off with a certain profit if you start selling longer dated options, two month, three month, four month, and so on. Yes, the total profit will grow, and then it's going to start to shrink once you hit this kind of this halfway point. And again, the reason for that happening is that the additional credit you're receiving exactly matches the additional decay. And that's got to eventually happen because the additional credits are shrinking and the additional decay is increasing. But if we look at it in percentage terms, it's always growing and that's this blue line. So look at this. Look at how it just goes off like a rocket ship. And so what that is showing is that yes, even though the strategy is getting cheaper and cheaper, it's giving traders the illusion that it's getting safer and safer because again, traders misinterpret risk and reward. They assume that cheaper positions mean less risk. Price is not risk. Probability of success is risk. So why is the ROI going through the roof here? This is probably the most important point of this video. When you are using calendar spreads, if you pick a certain expiration, in this example, 25 month, as you start selling longer and longer dated options against it, the risk is rapidly increasing. And the reason is to make it successful in one month, you only have to be correct that the stock price stays at the strike for one month. If you sell the two month, you've got to be correct for two months. If you sell the three month, you've got to be correct for three months and so on. And the chances of that being true month after month just start getting slimmer and slimmer. So when you're doing your calendar spreads, if you want to go out this far, that's one thing. 
I would probably stay more to intermediate term and sell off the shorter ones, even if it means having to redo them each month. But what you don't want to do, at least without understanding what you're getting into, is to buy something on the longer end of the expiration graph and then start selling something almost as long against it just because it creates a very small net debit. So this is why you have to really understand the ins and outs of strategies. There's a lot of misperceptions and traps that can happen, but it all hopefully unfolds once you understand the details. So for all of the calendar spreaders out there, and I know we have a lot of them in this group, I hope this helps you to see why it's so dangerous to start selling longer dated options against those long positions. And this is actually true whether it's a calendar spread or even a diagonal spread. Make sure you understand the math before you get into the strategy. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa to z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.